Pokemon! A series of modern RPG games with a standard formula for their stories and progression. Each game technically tells a different story, but there are certain elements that remain constant across each iteration of the games. Characters like the Professor and the Rival, and the antagonist that the player will have to face. Of course, the part of the formula that the player will interact with the most are the Pokemon Gyms. The system that the Pokemon games have used to mark progression in the story. Ever since the first game in the series, the gyms have stuck to their rule of being monotype. That means that each gym is themed around one type of Pokemon. I'm definitely not the first to think of trying to make a system of gyms that aren't monotype, but it's something I want to do anyway because I had the idea to do it. I'm not going to make new Pokemon or create a brand new region. I just want to try and use what I have at my disposal to make 8 fun, interesting, and even challenging gyms. First off, I would like to establish the levels that each gym will be working with. It's important when deciding when a gym will be challenged and what Pokémon to put in the gym based on how difficult it will be to defeat them. My thought process in deciding how high the level should be for each gym moving forward was by how fast the player can grind their Pokémon up to that level. I had actually moved backwards from the highest level to the lowest level, since if I were to start from the lowest, I might end up with an 8th gym leader with overpowered Pokemon, and the power creep would make the game less fun. When thinking of themes and ideas for the gym, I had two mindsets going in. How to teach the player the mechanics, and what would be fun to play through. With that set in place, I decided to have the first gym be a starter Pokemon only gym. A similar concept was done in the Unova region, but there you only had to face the leader with a Pokemon of the type that was strong against your starter. And to my memory, only Gardenia in the Sinnoh region has a starter in their team. The plan here is for the gym trainers to only have one Pokemon, and that Pokemon is one of the starters in the region. There would be three trainers, so the player can battle each one. The gym leader will have all three of them at the same level, level 12. This gym would teach the player about type advantages and disadvantages and how each starter plays in battle. The gym leader themselves could be one of the professor's assistants or maybe even the professor themselves, helping the player with their first steps in their gym challenge by being the first gym and to teach trainers vital information about Pokemon typing. I need to let you know now that I chose the order of the gyms after I had chosen the themes for them in order to balance the power creep as best I could. I did not intentionally make the duo gym the second gym for the pun. It just ended up that way. <laughs> this gym would consist of double battles only, and the Pokemon would all be Pokemon that come in pairs. Pokemon like version exclusive pairs, gender differences, location differences, and Pokedex connections. If a Pokemon has been paired up with another and can be called a duo, then it qualifies for this gym. This gym would teach the player about the basics of a double battle, while also being fun to play through with seeing all the Pokemon pairs in action. Tate and Liza already have the role of sibling gym leaders filled, so I think the next best thing I can do is have a romantic couple as the gym leaders. Double battles are all about supporting the partner Pokemon and taking them into account when choosing moves. The perfect metaphor for a relationship, right? Although that concept may be too adult for a children's game. So maybe it's just two good friends who wanted to be gym leaders and decided to do it together with no strings attached. That won't stop the shippers though. I had some debates with myself over the placement of the third and fourth gyms, because one follows the same idea of the first two with teaching the player about mechanics, while the other is the first of the fun themed gyms. Eventually, it was the level cap that led me to decide to put the farm gym as the third gym. It's possible that after going through two gyms of teaching mechanics that the player might not be having as much fun. So placing a fun theme here in the gym order might help ease the tension. The Pokemon that I chose for this gym are Pokemon that are based off of animals that you could find on a real farm. I was actually thinking that the whole gym itself could be a farm that is run by a large extended family. There could also be tall grass on the property too, where players could encounter wild Pokemon that could be found near a farm. You would think that the gym leader would be the head of the family, 
but I am thinking of taking it a step further and make the gym leader the next head of the family battling against the trainer, while the current head is giving them advice on the side. While making this gym, I realized that there is only one evolutionary line in Pokemon that is based on chickens. And it's the Torchic line. As of writing and making this video, they are the only ones. Which is a shame. I know I said I wouldn't be making new Pokemon for these gyms, but another chicken Pokemon line based off of Polish chickens is a must. The fourth gym is sort of a hybrid of teaching mechanics and having a fun theme. The theme? Evolutions! It's the obvious choice, really. Eevee has become so marketable and its evolution tree is so broad that making a gym fully surrounding the evolution family would be very fun. The mechanics that could be taught using the evolutions are weather, terrains, and abilities. For example... A double battle with a Vaporeon and a Jolteon, and a double battle with a Flareon and a Leafeon. Vaporeon and Flareon can learn Rain Dance and Sunny Day. Vaporeon's Rain Dance can help with Jolteon's accuracy with Thunder, and Flareon's Sunny Day can help Leafeon with their Leaf Guard ability, thus teaching the player that partner Pokémon can use the weather in order to help their partner. The weather also boosts their same type moves, which makes them a stronger threat against the player Pokémon. Also, Sylveon can set up a Misty Terrain, which boosts its fairy type moves. The gym trainers could explain to the player with their dialogue exactly what's going on if it isn't clear to them already. The idea I have for the gym leader is quite the galaxy brain move. You know the kimono girls from Johto? They have a younger sibling, yes? We have seen with the appearance of red and blue in Sun and Moon that time is moving forward in the Pokémon world, so it wouldn't be a stretch to say that the Kimono Girl's little sister might want to start up their own Eevee-based gym in another region, taking the tradition of their dance and making it global, perhaps discovering the beauty of other dances along the way, and deciding to make a dance studio to teach and learn about all of those dances. The rest of the gyms from here on are just fun-themed gyms. Except for the last gym, but I'll explain that when I get there. I tried my best to make them challenging and interesting. The fifth gym I have dubbed the Ancient Gym. Now, I don't mean fossils per se, I mean Pokémon that are relics or just really old. I suppose it's hard to explain. But I mean to say that Pokémon like Relicanth qualify because Relicanth is based off the Coelacanth an animal thought to have gone extinct and was theorized to possibly be a missing link between animals that live in the water and animals that live on land, only for living specimens to be discovered. Pokémon like Bronzong, Claydol, and Stonejourner are based on ancient artifacts. The Honage line is hinted at being ancient swords haunted by spirits, so they would qualify as well. But this criteria leaves the variety of Pokémon in the gym lacking, so fossils can be included. As for the gym leader... Lenora has her gym inside a museum, so that's not an option. We have a miner, some archaeologists... Would a college history professor work? Even if the first gym is already run by the region professor? They are technically different, so it works, right? Right? Right. The sixth gym I have decided to call the Wild Gym. But that name isn't really accurate to the idea I have for it. Really, I was thinking of an African savanna gym. But Africa doesn't exist in the Pokemon world, so that title would not work in a game. Maybe savanna gym could work? But I'm going to stick to wild gym for now. Like the farm gym before, the Pokemon that can be found in this gym are Pokemon that could be found in the savanna in real life. Giraffes? Hyenas, lions, zebras, and elephants. For the gym leader, I had the idea of having them be a Pokemon ranger who, while being the gym leader, also works at a Pokemon reserve and protects Pokemon from villains and poachers, being both a strong Pokemon trainer and a strong human person for the player to look up to. This next gym's theme is a tale as old as time. Beauty and the Beast. You know I had to do it to him. While beauty is subjective, 
the adjective here is to fill the gym with Pokemon that are either widely regarded as pretty, cute, and beautiful, alongside Pokemon that are considered rough, ugly, and beastly. The Evolution Gym is a dance company, so I think it'd be fun if this gym was a theater company. The gym trainers could be actors wearing different costumes for different roles, as well as makeup artists and tech crew. The gym leader themselves would be the director of the company. I think it'd be cool if the leader would give the player the option to choose which team they would fight to win the badge, the beauty team or the beast team, giving the player agency in the battle and adding replayability to the game itself. Now we're at the 8th and final gym, the one with the last of the mechanics which I want to try to teach the player. What mechanics? Competitive play. Things like items, natures, and introducing the idea of EV and IV training. But doing all that might have made the gym too powerful. That's why the theme for this gym is single. Pokemon that do not evolve. The range of strength for single Pokemon can be used to the gym's advantage, still making it a challenging final gym, but not making it impossible. The gym trainers could be ace and veteran trainers who wanted to pass on their knowledge to other trainers about the potential of the strength that each Pokemon has, even the ones that usually get ignored or forgotten. I'm a little stuck on who the gym leader could be. Young. Old. Ideally, someone who was experienced with battle? Maybe a previous champion? They started the gym to teach trainers about how to power up their Pokémon to make life a living hell for the new champion who was their rival? I think there's potential there, but it needs to be fleshed out by an actual story. Those are my ideas for 8 Pokémon gyms that are not monotype. It was a lot of fun to think of what Pokémon could be in the different gyms and... spoilers? I have more plans for Pokémon videos. Hopefully I can get them out soon, Really, it depends on what inspires me and motivates me next. Will I do an Elite Four and the Champion? Probably not! <laughs>